from the sister's mic to the left. Uh, my name is Renilda and uh, I'm a Christian. Like uh, since a long time I've been having conflicts with myself. The questions that I would like to ask today are mostly like maybe assumptions or like things where I've been influenced from people. Like my first question, it's about uh, pig. Uh, basically, I would like to know what exactly is the meaning of haram. Like, uh, is uh, for a religion like Islam, it won't accuse anyone of being wrong, yeah? Uh, it, it wouldn't say something to be so wrong. Why is uh, pig haram? Because uh, I had attended a Christian convention, and over there it was told, like there was this priest who was saying that why is pork haram in Islam? Uh, he gave an example, saying that uh, uh, like the same rubbish, like uh, it was used as manure for the plants. Uh, the plants, uh, like supposing it was a mango, mango tree, the mango grew, the roots had absorbed the same nutrients. The same rubbish, it uh, grew into mango and we consume it. So how is it different from consuming it in pork and uh, the mango? This was asked the question that what is the meaning of haram and why is pork haram in Islam? And to give the example of the priest, a Christian priest who said that many are which is dirt and filth is used by the tree the tree grows and then mango comes and we eat mango trying to say that even if you eat the filth of the pork it may be good for someone else may not be good for others that's what he means to say so in islam it's haram but christianity it's allowed sister first i'll tell you the meaning of haram means prohibited means forbidden haram in islam means prohibited it means forbidden I will answer your question of the priest first and then I'll come to the real reason why pork is haram the priest give the example that manure is supposed to be dirt and filth is healthy for the tree and when the tree grows it gives mango and we eat the mango trying to say that maybe it's haram for Muslims but good for Christians if you compare the manure which is filth for the human beings it may be good for the plants because plants and human beings are two different beings they aren't the same they are different but in islam and christianity the human beings are the same you may follow different religions but what is good for one human being as a general thing is good for the other human being unless he has certain problems for example if he has diabetes then sugar may not be good for him but normally sugar is good it gives you energy unless he has some problem then it may not be good for him but as far as general human beings are concerned the rule for all the human being what is good and bad is the same so you can't give the example of manure is good for some and not good for other what we have to see we have to go to the guide what does the guide tell us and we'll try and analyze what does the guide tell us the guide in Christianity it is the Bible the guide in Islam is the Quran when we read the Quran there are no less than four different places where the Quran says pork is prohibited Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 173 in Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse number 3 in Surah Anam chapter number 6 verse number 145 and Surah Nahal chapter number 16 verse number 115 Forbidden for you for food are huh? dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine and any food on which any name besides Allah's name is taken so your Quran says in no less than four different places that eating the flesh of pig, pork is prohibited Similarly, if you read the Bible, Bible in no less than three different places says pork is prohibited. Bible says in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8, that thou shalt not eat the flesh of swine, nor touch its carcass. It's unclean for you. A similar message is given in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. Though the swine has cloven foot and it chews not the cud, it is unclean for you 
Similarly, it's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5, that you should not have the flesh of swine. So Bible says in no less than three different places that you should not have the flesh of swine. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 and 20, that think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come not to destroy but to fulfill. For anyone who breaks one of the least commandments shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. That means if you break one law, one jot or tittle from the Old Testament, you shall not enter Jannah. So as a Christian, if you believe in the Bible, then eating pork is prohibited for you, is forbidden for you, is haram for you. If you are a Muslim, if you believe in the Quran, it is prohibited. If you do not believe in the Bible or do not believe in the Quran, let's analyze what does today's reason and logic and science say about pork. Today science tells us that if you have the flesh of swine, there are chances that you may have no less than 70 different diseases. You can have pinworm, you can have roundworm. The most dangerous amongst all these diseases, it is tapeworm. It's called Astenia solium. And it harbors in the intestine and is very long. Even if you cook the food very well, the eggs, the ova of Tinea solium does not die. And from the intestine, through, via the bloodstream, it can go to almost all the organs of your body. It can enter the eye and cause blindness. It can enter the heart and cause heart attack. It can enter the brain and cause brain damage. And by the time you realize you're suffering from the disease, it's an irreversible damage done. Furthermore, today science tells us that when you eat pork, it is more of fat building material rather than muscle building material. That's the reason most of the people who are regular pig eaters, they have got tires, they have got flaps. Today science tells us that by eating pork, there are high chances of having atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis. Today science tells us that if you eat pig regularly, you may have hypertension. That's the reason more than 50% of the Americans today, they're suffering from hypertension because most of them are pig eaters. Today, science tells us that one of the most filthiest animal on the face of the earth is the pig. Wherever you find dirt and filth, you'll find the pig there. Today, science also tells us that pig is one of the most shameless animal on the face of the earth. Pig today is one of the most shameless animal on the face of the earth. It enjoys seeing its spouse, seeing its mate have sex with his friend. In the Western countries, we have dance parties. After dance parties, we are swapping of wives. You sleep with my wife, I sleep with your wife. Do you think it's modest? And there is a scientific thing that you eat pig and you behave like pig. Hope this answers your question, sister. Yes, very good. Uh, my next question. It's about um, the prasad and charnamrit that's given in the temple. Uh, I would uh, like to know how is it different from like when Muslims go to Hajj, they bring dates and uh, zamzam pani. So why is it like Muslims have to stop themselves from having the prasad or taking the charnamrit? How is it different? Sister asked a very good question. She's saying that when Hindus go to temple, they give prasad. When Muslims go to Hajj, they give dates. So what's the difference? The difference is prasad is food which is put onto gods. In Hinduism, you find the Hindus, Hinduism is separate. The Hindus, what they do, they go to the temple and they give the food to God. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Anam, chapter 6, verse number 14, Allah feedeth everyone but does not require to be fed. How can we human beings give food to God? Furthermore, Quran says in no less than four different places which I quoted earlier. Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 173. Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse number 3. Surah Anam chapter 6 verse 145. And Surah Nahal chapter 16 verse 115. Forbidden for you for food, ah? that meat, blood, the flesh of swine, and any food on which any name besides Allah's name is taken. So if you take on a food, any other name besides Allah's name, it is prohibited, it's haram. When Muslims go, to Hajj or Umrah, when they give date, no one says this date has been given to Almighty God. 
date you know because one of the main fruits of Saudi Arabia is date so when you go we get that fruit just as a gift no Muslim ever says that this date has been given to Almighty God to Allah and date is very nutritious it's very nutritious and it's very healthy so this is just as a gift how you get sweets you know when you come from India go abroad you give sweets so this is a very delicious fruit and it is the main fruit of Saudi Arabia it has no link no one says that this date has been given to Almighty God if the Hindu gives date to Almighty God even eating the date is haram if some Hindu gives date to Almighty God and says this is Prasad eating the date becomes haram so anyone takes any name besides Allah on that date that date will also become haram so that's the difference between Muslims and Hindus we don't believe that Almighty God requires to eat we human beings require to eat. Hope that answers the question, sister. Yes, yes. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? Yes, yes. The next question. Sister, I would, ask uh, the most important question. One more. Most important question. 